Let's do this, Drew. What are we taking? Two and a half calls? Let's try one more here. How about Sarah? What's up, Sarah? Oh, my God. Hello. Hey, Sarah. Uh, hi. Yeah, um, Adam, Adam and I almost got killed in Austin once. Do you remember that? We were in that huge volleyball stadium, and they mm-hmm. go, and they go, Adam, you'll be signing uh, autographs over here, and there's, woof. Oh, you're calling from Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? I do remember that. I don't remember the stampede part, but, yeah, I remember playing Austin. What's happening, Sarah? Um, well, this is so embarrassing. Um, I went to the doctor today, and he told me that I have an anal fissure. Yeah, I expect to see lots more of that with everyone's uh, anal sex stuff. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Is that, is that what causes it? causes it? It could. I mean, it's one of the potential problems with anal sex. Are you, are you engaging in that? Well, occasionally, but it never hurts or anything. It always feels fine. Mm-hmm. I really don't think that was, I really didn't think that was the problem anyways. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what does it. How does it do it? It just tears. A fissure is actually a tear, tear. like, like, a like tear. I mean, sort of it's like, like, like when, the, when, when when seismologists talk about fissures, like the same thing, like a crack in yeah, the earth. Yeah, but a good ex- like a similar phenomenon would be, you know, you get cracks on the side of your mouth. Sometimes you ever had that the, the trouble healing here? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the same thing, but it's in your anus. Yeah, that's why I stay away from Was the. Was that gir- her? I stay away from the girthy guys, so I don't get the crack oh, inside yeah. the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that her smoke detector? I heard something. What? Hello. Was that a smoke detector? Um, what? Okay. All good smoke detectors start off. All good smoke detector calls start off that way. Yeah. What? Huh? What are you talking about? Like, there's probably one in this house. Are you in a room that has a smoke detector? Uh, yeah. I'm sitting actually kind of right by it. Yeah, we heard it. No. In about, yeah, it was pretty, there it is. There it is. All right, let's time it. Let me mark the time. T minus 30 seconds and counting. Um, all I'm by the way it's delighted. It's 35 seconds. Stand okay. under the smoke detector, please, Sarah. Okay. I know. Uh, I know from doing this show that it's somewhere between like 27 and 33 seconds. There must be some code, you know, OSHA or something must have some sort of code. It won it uh, 155, so it's coming up. That's in, in, in about eight seconds. All right. Let's see if we can time it. You buy it, Sarah? There it is. There it is. I just marked it at 29. Yeah. So that. Oh. that that one at, uh, hold on, that one at 2.25 yeah. on, on our clock? Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. So. No, 29 seconds. So we have another one coming at uh, 54? Yeah. Is that correct? Oh, my God. All right, let's see if I can time this. You got so it. Two, 2.54, Drew? I think that's right. So you got about eight seconds. All right. Let's see. Three. Two. Oh. A little early. All right, that's one at 51. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with timing. All right, so wait a minute. That went a little early, so we're probably like 26, 27 yeah, seconds. Yeah. That one went at 51. Mm-hmm. So we should be going at like 18. Fast. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can time it. Quiet. Shh. Three, two, one, go. What the? What the hell? It's intermittent. True. No, wait, wait, just one thing. Oh, the, are, have you stepped out of the room, Sarah? I'm standing right by it. What happened? Did it go off? Yeah. You, we did, you can't hear it? We didn't hear it. I talked over it. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, we got somewhere. This is a fast one. Yeah, it's going to go right about now again. Here you go. Shh. Okay, there we go. Vindication. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> now... Never noticed it. Like, I know it was going off when we moved sure, in. Sure, there's a... Going off when you moved in. When you moved in, how many years ago did you move in? Oh, it was like two months ago. It wasn't years ago. Hold on, Drew. After a while, you don't hear it anymore. I know. That's what's freaking us out. Yeah, I think it's actually, my friends have timed it before, and it's like, I think it's actually like 47 seconds. Now, let's no, just, let's it's, just, it, it's, it's not 47 20, 20 seconds. seconds. It's, we got it's it. It's in the 20s. But hang on. Let's just reflect upon this for a second. A, she lives with that thing going off. We're 2,000 miles away. It bugs us. We can't live with it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. She lives with that thing going off 24-7 like a lizard learns to live with it. But, yay, there are other friends that will gather and make note of said uh, uh, instrument. And and nobody goes, uh, I'll run down to the 7-Eleven and get a battery. Okay. Let, let, me, let me explain something. Don't put her on hold because okay. I've not nearly begun this rant. I figured. People's ability or inability to 
accept things and ability to tune things out is endless mm -hmm. and abundant. It's unbelievable. The uh, there there's um, I'm you wonder what we tune out. All of us tune out. That's in our sort of background all the time. Were you talking? I'm sorry. Beg your pardon. I saw your mouth. Yeah, your pardon. Something come out. <laughs> okay. There is a uh, UL under underwriters laboratory, and they have rules. The underwriters laboratory. You understand? You can't just come out with a toaster, mm -hmm. and I can't just invent a microwave. Mm -hmm. It needs to be tested by the man. Yeah. Because we need to make sure it's not going to start a fire. It's not going to be shocked when you plug it in. That your toast is not going to pop out and hit the ceiling in flames. So you get a UL number. You get a UL number. Yeah. Underwriters laboratory. Yeah. Now, if it's going in your house, it needs to go through this process. It's not like, hey, what do you got? Oh, I got a knockoff smoke detector. It's made in Guadalajara, and I sell them on the corner. No, 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 no. They must go to the underwriter's laboratory and be extensively tested. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the things they do is they go, when it's low on battery, it must have a chirp. And that chirp must be good for X amount of decibels so that n nobody, no human being, <laughs> who's occupying the area that the smoke detector in, it must be, it's such a decibel that the human being would be compelled to change the battery almost immediately. Just like I'm sure horns in boats and horns in cars and horns and, and sirens must reach a certain decibel level. Otherwise, they're ineffective. By the way, I was awakened a uh, morning probably two weeks ago by said smoke detector chirp three rooms away from my bedroom. Right. And it drove me so crazy. Before I got to brush my teeth, I had to go change the thing. So the underwriter's laboratory says it's going to have to be... 33 decibels, and it must be in a period uh, no less than once every 40 seconds or once every 28 seconds. And those are the laws. And, and the man signed off on that. Well, there's not a human being alive that wouldn't change this 9-volt battery uh, post-haste. <laughs> but somehow yeah. the underwriter's laboratory could not, could not account for how goddamn dumb we are. Even they, even they who put warning labels on everything and, you know, all when you see a commercial for a car and it's just driving through the desert, it's just driving down the highway to Nevada, it's a minivan, it's going in a straight line down uh, the uh, 10, it says do not attempt, stunt driver, <laughs> special vehicle. <laughs> what? We can't attempt to drive our vehicle? <laughs> even when they're going on a goddamn straight line, just a straight line driving through Henderson, it says do not attempt. Closed course, professional driver. <laughs> really? I'm supposed to buy your Odyssey minivan and not attempt to drive it? That's what great. I, what shall I not do? Not a desert. Shall I push it back from the dealership? <laughs> well, I'm going to save a lot on gas. I'll tell you that right now. But I'm going to have trouble getting the kids to school because I, at some point I'm going to need to actually get behind the wheel of this thing and attempt to drive it. Do not attempt. I understand when the guy's going See over the, the when the guy's going over the waterfall and the Fiat, they do the do not attempt thing. But I like it when it's just been distilled down to the guy literally just driving the car. Do not attempt. Adam, so this is a society. Slope. This is a society we've constructed for ourselves, and somehow we have confounded these people because they did not count on Sarah. They did not count on the anal queen that's able to drown out the sound of the smoke detector. Now I must know. I must. And I must all delve, her friends. I must delve friends. deeper. Sat around, timed it, and talked it. Nobody fixed it. Uh, put her back on hold. Oh. Let me explain the problem with smoke detectors and women. Women do not know how to reach <laughs> things that are beyond their grasp. Chimpanzees <laughs> can figure this out. When you take a goddamn banana and you hang it from a string on the ceiling of yes. a chimpanzee cage, yes. the chimpanzees will pile up boxes and one of them will go up and get the banana. <laughs> Women would stand there and stare at the banana. You could put an A-frame ladder right next to them, would not get on it. Do you know how many guys die every year falling off ladders? Yeah. It's into the thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Joel McHale, our beloved His Joel dad. McHale. Dad fell off a ladder, shattered. Artie Lang's dad he got quadriplegic that way. Half of every guy of every guy you've ever met at some point will so, be cleaning out some gutters in his 60s and take a spill off a ladder. So who's the foolish one here? <laughs> Women or men? Millions What's of men. What's the point? Here's why we get paid.